Welcome to No Signal. My name is Brian Regala. And I'm Tyler West, and we're two college students from Elon, North Carolina. And No Signal is a multimedia program designed to take you places and show you things off the beaten path. And this is our first episode. That's right. You know, some may say September is a pretty boring month. No major holidays, nothing to really look forward to. That's not how we like to look at things. No, it's not. And that's why, with some help from the internet, we found Shackleford Banks back in September. And Shackleford Banks is one of the most southern islands in the North Carolina bank system, and it's totally deserted. So, one Friday, we grabbed our camera gear, loaded up the Jeep, and headed out to the coast. Barreling down I-40 on our way to the coast, we found the best way to get to Shackleford from Elon is to take Interstate 40 to Highway 70 South, and follow that the rest of the way. Because we started planning our weekend the night before, we didn't really know what we're getting ourselves into. But hey, everything worked out like it always does. We pulled into Core Sound Kayaks right on time. We signed the usual liability waivers and got the PFDs. We were outfitted with two tandem sea kayaks and paddles. And for anyone who may be weary about paddling on the ocean, these boats are surprisingly sturdy, even in choppy seas. In all, the kayak rental set us back about 50 bucks a person, and that was the best deal we could find. And Corson Kayaks cared about our safety. Dennis gave us his personal sea map and a bunch of information about the area. Shackleford Banks is nine miles long, completely uninhabited with no motorized vehicles at all. The very first and the easiest place to go to would be the area referred to locally as the horse pen. It's an area that has some barbed wire corral fences with a dock. It's two and a quarter miles across, and it's typically about an hour paddle. By the time we made it to Harker's Island, the sun was setting fast. Dennis sketched us a map in the sand of the nearby islands, and he pointed us you in the right direction. You parallel that channel on the back side of these Marsh Islands. Okay. You still go down that way. We unloaded the Jeeps and stuffed the kayaks full with camera equipment, camping gear, and food. We packed so much stuff that we almost didn't get ourselves in the boat. Yeah, and like we said, we are uh, probably over the weight limit on this thing already, which is going to make for an interesting ride because, like we said, it's about an hour across, and uh, there's nothing between here and, and where we're going. So, a little chop. Ooh, let's go right. And Dennis was right. It only took about an hour to get across the Pamlico. We kept the pier in sight and landed at the horse pen around 6 o'clock. The first thing we noticed about Shackleford was the sunset. And as anyone from coastal North Carolina will tell you, the sunsets are amazing. But we'll go a step further and tell you the mosquitoes are terrible. Shackleford Banks camping tip number one. Bring plenty of bug spray. We lugged the kayaks across to the Atlantic side and noticed the bugs aren't as bad near the ocean. So tip number two, camp on the beach. We set up camp near mile marker 49 of the National Seashore. And like Dennis said, we were the only ones on the island. But it was so quiet the next morning that we decided maybe it was time to go and see if we couldn't find those wild horses we'd heard so much about. From our camp, we headed north towards the Cape Lookout Lighthouse. Most of the interior of Shackleford is prairie, and we were able to spot a herd of horses from a pretty good distance away. Which brings up camping tip number three, pack enough water. We caught up with a herd of horses a little over a mile from camp, and we inched closer to a group drinking from a spring. The National Park Service prohibits the provoking of horses, and we kept that in mind. Big animal. All right, so this is where they drink. There's a watering hole right there. There's three of them hanging out. I'm not scared of human interaction. The Park Service tries to keep human interaction to a minimum. Number 31. Let us touch them. Out there, man. All horses are branded with a number. The park caps the herd at about 110. But how do these horses end up on an island? Well, these animals came with the Spanish conquistadores in the 1600s and have thrived on the island for nearly 400 years. Even though the horses are used to seeing humans, you should definitely try to keep your distance. Another thing, don't be shocked if the horses get too close. We were surprised when a herd cut right through our camp as we were eating lunch. That afternoon, we decided to head to Cape Lookout Lighthouse on the next island. Let's look at the old trusty map, laminated, That's right. waterproof. About two and a half, three miles. We'll stay along the shore here, uh, curve around, and then be right over here at Cape Lookout. The supposed our paddle probably took twice that. We had technical difficulties in the beginning. First band of power. Plus 48 on the other side. 
It needs to be off on both. Yeah, it's off. Then we ran aground on a sandbar and found a conch. What we have here is a, uh, a conch shell, and as you guys know, conch are the uh, creature that lives inside of the shell. You don't want to pick it up? I thought you were doing it. Okay. I can. <laughs> After you. All right. Oh, and well, this thing. it's uh, it's a dead conch. What is that? Oh, that's a thing. This is something coming. Yeah, one, something was eating the other one. Oh. This is not part of the conch shell. Well, all right. Don't this is a what snake is that thing? thing. This is something that's stealing out of a. No, it didn't steal. Sure. We don't claim to be marine biologists, but we found one and learned that the animal was a knobbed whelk. In the long string, those were its eggs. When we finally landed on South Core, we made some more discoveries. The island is partially inhabited, and it allows off-road beach driving. For around $70, off-roaders can load their 4x4s on a ferry and drive along the beach. So you don't want to rough it on Shackelford? Take one of the ferries from the mainland and set up camp near the lighthouse. Don't worry. Campers say even though there are more people, Core Sound is still secluded. You can camp on the beach. It's fairly remote. There's nobody out here at night, um, and the people during the day are pretty limited, so you have lots of space and free reign. So camping tip number four, if you want bathrooms, you're going to have to stay on South Core. If you want to experience all that this area of the Outer Banks has to offer, you really need more than a weekend. Visiting South Core will take a good chunk of your day if you plan to see the lighthouse and tour the keeper's quarters. We made it back to Shackleford just before the sun dipped over the horizon. And at that moment, we came to a conclusion. Exploring deserted islands takes a lot of energy. That's why we suggest spending your last night on Shackleford like we did, relaxing by a warm campfire with a plate full of s'mores. Ain't nothing like a s'more. Especially when it drips all over your face, you know? Love it. <laughs>